Hello boys and girls. I want to welcome you to our Super Church service online. We're excited that you're joining us here today and we're looking forward to studying the Bible together. I want you to know that we are still sad at church that we can't see you each week in person at the church. And we're looking forward to the day when we can meet together again. But we are excited that we can make a video like this and we can watch online a great message from the Word of God. And so today we're going to look at the Bible and study and see what God has for us today. Now while you're at home, I hope you're finding some things to do that uh, are fun. I hope maybe you're finding some uh, interesting games to play and, and spending some fun time together with your family. I hope you're keeping up with your homework and and just having a good time at home and uh, although we're stuck at home we can still find some great things to do to help us pass the time in an enjoyable way. I also hope you're thinking about the Lord while you're at home and although we can't go to church we can still serve our God while we're at home. We can still practice all the great things that we've learned from God's Word in our own life and we can uh, read the Bible while we're at home and and we can pray and we can spend time trying to be more like Jesus even though we're stuck at home during this time. Uh, but we're glad you're here today and we're looking forward to seeing you again very soon. But until then, we want to keep on studying the Bible and seeing what God has for us in His Word. Today we're going to continue looking in God's Word about who Jesus is. We've been looking at this for the past several Super Church lessons and so we want to continue that again today. Now today we want to think about the idea of the sacrificial lamb. Do you know what a sacrifice is? We've talked about a sacrifice before. We see, him, see sacrifices a lot in the Old Testament and we want to think about that a little bit today. In the beginning of the Bible, in the book of Genesis, we find Adam and Eve. And you remember their story. God had given them just a great place to live. And they had all those animals in that wonderful garden. And there was just one thing that they couldn't do. They could not eat of the, the fruit off of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. But you remember what happened. The devil came that old serpent, and he began to talk to Eve, and he deceived her, he tricked her into thinking that it was a good thing to eat that fruit, even though God said not to eat it. And of course, Eve listened to the devil, she ate the fruit, and then Adam ate the fruit as well. And because they disobeyed God, they had sinned. And sin, we know, separates us from God. Remember, sin is anything that we think, that we say, or that we do that displeases the Lord. It's when we disobey, when we go against His principles that He's given us. And because Adam and Eve sinned, they were separated from God. And in order for them to come back to God, God had to restore them. He had to make a covering for their sin. And what uh, God did there in that garden is he took an animal and he slain or he killed that animal and out of the, the skin of that animal he made, a, he made clothes for Adam and Eve or a covering for them. And that was a picture of something that was going to happen later. And then when Moses came a little bit later in uh, the history, uh, we read about him in the Bible, we find that God gave him plans to make a tabernacle. And we're so uh, uh, excited to read about the tabernacle and all the wonderful things that were a part of it and all the details that uh, were uh, made up in the tabernacle. It's very fascinating. One of the things, though, that was a part of the tabernacle was an altar. And, of course, that altar was there to offer sacrifices to God. They needed that because God's people, even though... They wanted to please God and serve God. They found out that they just uh, had a hard time obeying God, a lot like you and I. And when they would disobey, when they sinned against God, they needed a covering for their sin as well. They needed, uh, the Bible word is, to be atoned for their sin. They needed a covering for their sin. And the way that that would happen was by the sacrifices. And they would kill an animal. The animal would bleed and it would die. It's very sad. It makes us sad to think about, but it had to happen uh, 
uh, because of the sin of the people. And the reason that God gave us those sacrifices was because it was picturing or showing us something that was going to happen later. Jesus Christ, the Savior, the Messiah, was going to come and he was going to be the ultimate sacrifice for God's people, for, in fact, for the entire world. And so those sacrifices pictured what the Savior was going to come to do. And of course, we know today that that Savior was Jesus Christ. And we know that he came and he was born in this world. We celebrate that at Christmas time. And then he grew up, and all throughout his life on earth, he did not sin. He did not displease God. He did not even think one poor thought. Sometimes it's hard for us to make it an hour throughout the day without having a poor thought, a mean thought, uh, those kind of things. And yet Jesus lived perfectly. But the Bible tells us that he ultimately went to a cross. The cross was an instrument that uh, was used in that day to execute criminals. Now, was Jesus a criminal? No, he wasn't a criminal. He's the perfect son of God. He did no wrong. But the Bible says he went to that cross, and they nailed him to a cross, and they hung him up there like a criminal. And the Bible says that God took my sins and your sins, and they were all on Jesus. And he suffered in our place for us. He surrendered his life for you and for me to make a way for us to be saved, to have salvation, uh, to know God and be able to go spend eternity in heaven with him. Jesus did that for us. So he died there. He took our sins. He took our place. They buried him. But then three days later, what happened? He rose again. And we celebrate that on Easter, which is coming up soon, that Jesus Christ rose again. And we know today that he is alive and that he's in heaven. And because Jesus died, was buried, and rose again, he was the ultimate sacrifice for you and for me. We don't have sacrifices anymore. We don't have an altar at our church where people bring in animals and make a sacrifice, do we? Why not? Because Jesus was the ultimate sacrifice. Those animals that were sacrificed in the Old Testament, they were not perfect, but Jesus is perfect. And he became the perfect sacrifice for us. He became the sacrificial lamb for us. And when we think about what Jesus Christ did for us, it's incredible. It's amazing that he loves us so much that he was willing to leave heaven to come to earth and live on this earth. He went through all the hard times, all the trials. We read in the Bible how there was times when Jesus cried because he was sad. There were times when he was upset and he was frustrated about what was going on uh, around him. He did all these things for you and for me because he loves us. But ultimately, he went to the cross. And before they put him on that cross, they beat him up. They mocked him. They spit at him. They called him uh, a criminal. They, they humiliated him. And Jesus willingly did all those things because he loves us so much. And it's incredible to think about all that Jesus is. In the Gospel of John, in chapter number 1, in verse number 29, listen to what the Bible says. In John chapter 1, sorry, I got a, my pages are sticking together. John chapter 1, verse 29, John the Baptist was teaching one day, and as he was teaching, the Bible says he looked up and he saw Jesus. And verse 29 says, The next day John seeing Jesus coming unto him and saith, Behold, the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sin of the world. And John the Baptist, a great preacher, reminded, uh, uh, reminds us that Jesus is the sacrificial lamb. He came to die on the cross so that you and I could go to heaven one day. Now, the Bible teaches us in the Gospel of Luke, in chapter number 22, uh, it teaches us about what Jesus was going through for you and for me. And uh, right before he went to the cross, the Bible talks about how Jesus was in the garden of Gethsemane. And he went there to pray. He went there to talk to God the Father. And as he was there praying, uh, the Bible says that his heart was burdened. He, he was heavy, thinking about what he was getting ready to do. And the Bible teaches us in Luke chapter number 22, in verse number 42, Jesus was praying. And listen to what he said. He says, Father, 
If thou be willing, remove this cup from me. Nevertheless, not my will, but thine be done. And Jesus knew how hard what he was going to do was going to be. And he said, if there's any other way, we could do it another way. But he, he said, I don't want to do what I want. I want to do what the Father wants, what God the Father wants. And so the Bible says that Jesus surrendered to the will of God. He, 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 he did what the Father wanted. He did what was necessary so that he could save you and me. He didn't need saving but we need saving from our sin. And he came to do that. Just back a couple of chapters in the Gospel of Luke, in chapter number 19, the Bible tells us what Jesus' mission was in the world. Jesus said in verse number 10 in Luke 19, For the Son of Man is come to seek and to save that which was lost. He came to save people, to save lost people. Who is he talking about? Well, he's talking about you and me. Because before we knew Jesus Christ, before we asked him to come into our heart and to save us, the Bible says we were lost. What that means is we didn't know God. We were on our way to the lake of fire, eternally separated from God. And if you've never been saved today, I want you to know that the Bible says you're lost. You won't go to heaven, but you'll be separated from God forever. But Jesus loves us so much, that's why he came to die for us. He became our sacrifice. And it's incredible to think how amazing that was. So Jesus is incredible. Jesus, his love for us is unimaginable. It's, we can't even fathom how great it is. And yet he loves us so much. And the love that Jesus has for you and for me is so great that it makes me want to respond. It makes me want to do something for him. And thinking about his love, it just causes me, it just makes me, it gives me a great desire to want to follow Jesus. I want to follow somebody who loves me that much. And I want to please somebody who loves me that much. And so how can I do that? How can I follow If he loves me that much, if he wanted to be my sacrifice, if he wanted to take my place on the cross because he loved me so much, how can I now follow him? I love him so much, I want to follow him. How am I going to do that? Well, I want you to know the way that we're going to follow him is by following his example. He sacrificed for us. He surrendered to the will of the Father for us. And so if we're going to follow him, we need to surrender to him. That's the word I want you to think about today. We need to surrender to him. God knows what's best for us. And God wants what's best for us. And so if we can surrender to Him, if we can give our life to Him, He'll give us what's best in our lives. And so let me give you just a couple of things, and we'll be finished today in the Bible. The first thing I want you to know, if we're going to follow Jesus, if we're going to surrender to Him, then we need to surrender our plans to God. We need to surrender our plans to Him. Surrendering to Him means that we're willing to do whatever He wants us to do. Not what we want to do, but what He wants to do. Remember what Jesus said when He was praying? I don't want to do what I want. I don't want to do my will, but I want to do your will, God. I want to do what the Father wants me to do. And so, surrendering our plans to God means we want to do whatever He wants us to do. Now, have you ever had somebody ask you, what do you want to be when you grow up? I want you to think about this. That's the wrong question to be asked. The right question would be this. What does God want me to be when I grow up? Or what does God want me to do when I grow up? And I know that you have a long time before you're an adult, but I want you to realize and I want you to know that God has a special plan for you. And if we're going to follow God, if we're going to surrender our lives to God, then we've got to realize He has a great plan for us. And if I'll listen to Him, if I'll follow Him, He'll show me some wonderful things. He's got a great plan for me. God might want one of you to be a preacher or a missionary. He might want, to, want one of you one day uh, to be a doctor or to be uh, a pilot, to be a mechanic. He might want one of you to be a Sunday school teacher. God has a great plan for you. Whatever it is, 
If we'll follow God's plan, it'll be the very best thing in our lives. And wherever God takes us in our life, if we'll live for Him and tell other people about Jesus wherever we are, God will, will use that in a great way. And we can share God's love with other people around us. And so if we're going to surrender, we want to surrender our plans to God. But then secondly, I want you to know if we want to, sur to surrender to God and follow Him, then we need to surrender our way to God. We need to surrender our way to God. What I mean by that is we need to learn to do things God's way. Sometimes we think we know what's best, but I want you to know we don't. We don't know what's best. And so we need to learn what God has for us and what His way is for living our life. What's, well, how are we going to respond uh, to things that are happening when we're mad, when we're sad, when we're excited? What are we going to do? We've got to do it God's way and not what we think is best. But how are we going to know what God's ways are? Well, we find that in the Bible. And so, if we're going to surrender to God, then the Bible has to be so important to us. That's why it's important to, to, to be a part of Super Church, even though it's online right now, to be a part of Super Church, to be able to listen to the preacher, uh, to be able to listen to Bible teachers, and to spend time in the Bible, because the Bible teaches us what God has for us in our lives. And so, we need to surrender to God's way. Surrender to God's plans and to surrender to God's ways, and that will allow us to follow after the God that we love. He loves us so much, and so we want to follow after Him. I want to give you just one more verse before we leave. In, in Proverbs chapter number 3, in verse number 5, the Bible says this, Trust in the Lord with all thine heart, and lean not unto thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge Him, and he shall direct thy path. Jesus loves us so much. And if I'm going to follow him, I've got to realize that my way is not the best way. It doesn't matter what I want, but only what God wants. And that's what I need to do. And the Bible says that if I will trust the Lord, if I'll trust in Jesus with all my heart, that means I, I, don't, I, I will not doubt him. I trust him with everything I have. I know that he's right. And if I'll choose not to... to follow or listen to just what I think, but I'll find out what God thinks about it. The Bible says that He will direct me. He will guide me. He'll help me to know Him better and to live a life uh, that will be filled with joy and peace and happiness, uh, a life that will be filled with the promises of God and a life that uh, has an impact in this world. That can help uh, other people uh, know the Lord Jesus Christ. And then the next verse says, and be not wise in thine own eyes, but fear the Lord and depart from evil. When the Bible says fear the Lord, it doesn't mean be afraid of Him, but it means to respect Him, to be in awe of Him, to, to look up at Him and say, wow, you are incredible. And when I think about how much Jesus loves me, it makes me think, wow, how incredible you are. And if we can live that way and depart from evil, that means to run away from evil, from sinful things. That means when we see something we know that is wrong, that we say, I don't want to do that. I'm going to stay away from it. Or when we find something in our own life, we realize, uh-oh, this won't please the Lord. Then we decide, I don't want to do that because Jesus loves me so much. I want to do what Jesus wants in my life. And so we can follow after him. And so the Bible teaches us about the sacrificial lamb. Jesus is our sacrificial lamb. And it reminds us that his love is so incredible for us, and it makes me want to surrender to Him. And I'm going to surrender my plans, and I'm going to surrender my ways, because His plans are the best, and His ways are the best. It's hard sometimes to live the way God desired, oh, but it's the best. And it allows us to know more and more and more about the love of Jesus Christ. Well, I'm so thankful that you joined us today in our online Super Church service. I can't wait to see you again. Uh, but until uh, we meet again, I hope you'll have uh, a great time studying the Bible and learning more about how great our God is. We'll see you next week uh, on our video lesson. Uh, if you need anything, we hope you'll uh, get a hold of us. You can contact us. You can have your parents help you. And you can send a message on, the face on our Facebook page, our church website, or you can call our office, uh, church office, and we'd be glad to help you however we can. 
But it's been great to be with you today. As we finish up, I'd just like to pray and ask God to bless uh, uh, what he's given us in the Bible today. So let's pray together. Heavenly Father, thank you so much for the day. Thank you for the privilege to open up the Bible and spend some time together. Lord, we miss so much seeing the boys and girls of our church uh, face to face. I miss getting to see their smiles and getting to hear them laugh. Lord, we miss our time just playing games and, and, and having our snacks and singing our songs. But Lord, we are thankful that we can still study the Bible together. And Lord, we look forward to the day we can be together again. But until then, we're praying you will continue to help us to learn more about the Bible, how it uh, will help us know you better, and Lord, help us learn to just obey what the Bible teaches us. We love you today. We thank you so much for all you do. It's in the precious name of Jesus we pray. Amen. All right. Thank you guys for joining in. We'll see you next time.